The next metal we will address is arsenic. Arsenic is found in cigarette smoke, laundry detergents, beer, seafood, colored chalk, wallpaper, wine, and drinking water. Thus, we are exposed to this poison in the first and second hand smoke we inhale, the beverages we drink, and even the clothes we wear. It accumulates in the kidneys, liver and lungs, and it causes headaches, mental confusion, and fatigue. Let's talk about cadmium. Cadmium is found in soft drinks, cigarette smoke, water softeners, rubber, motor oil, pesticides, fungicides, carpets, rust proofing, silver polish, and plastics. Cadmium accumulates in the kidneys, prostate and eyes, and can cause fatigue, high blood pressure, hair loss, edema, arthritis, and impotence. The last of the traditional toxic metals we will discuss is uranium. Uranium is a radioactive element that causes disease and cancer everywhere it appears. There have been over 2,000 nuclear detonations on this planet since Hiroshima, each one sending radioactive dust into the atmosphere for future generations to inhale, not to mention toxic plumes from disasters like the meltdown at Chernobyl. The most recent appearance of uranium is in munitions used in the Iraq War. So far, an estimated 2,000 tons of uranium have been used in Iraq, turning that country into a radioactive nightmare that future generations will pay for in horrible birth defects and cancer. Our soldiers are also breathing this uranium dust in and bringing it back to their families in their bodies and their clothes. The increased number of birth defects found in the children of Iraq war veterans is frightening. You don't have to be in Iraq, however, to be exposed to the effects of this uranium dust. After all, the world shares just one atmosphere. Given time, the uranium that is used in Iraq travels as a toxic dust around the world and ends up in our own lungs. The fact of the matter is, no matter where we live and what we do, if we eat food, drink water, and breathe air, we are being exposed to toxic metals every day. Once a toxic metal gets into the body, it is very difficult to get it out again. This is because these toxic metals aren't just floating around in the bloodstream or sitting in the fatty tissues. They actually become part of our body at a cellular level. This happens because to your body, Toxic metals look just like other elements, elements we need. This is due to similarities in atomic size and electron configuration. Thus, rather than recognizing a toxic metal as a poison and getting rid of it, the body instead tries to use it like a nutritional element, and this is where the problems start. Take mercury, for example. To the body, mercury looks just like the nutritional mineral selenium. Since most people are chronically deficient in selenium, when a molecule of mercury floats by in the bloodstream, the body thinks, oh good, some selenium, I need that, and it gobbles it right up. Of course, mercury may look like selenium, but it doesn't act like selenium. In fact, in many ways, it is the exact opposite of selenium. Once the mercury is incorporated into the body, it is free to exert its toxic influence 24 hours a day, generating free radicals, melting nerves, and suppressing immune function. In this same manner, lead is mistaken for calcium, cadmium is mistaken for zinc, and aluminum, nickel, and uranium are mistaken for magnesium. It is this insidious ability of toxic metals to trick your body into incorporating them into your tissues that makes them so difficult to get rid of. All right. We've covered the traditional toxic metals now.